What's going on guys, Noah Brewer here, and today I'm gonna to be telling you how we've saved tons and tons of winners uh, from getting disabled. Not that we saved the ad accounts, but there are ways around it. Um, and I'm gonna to try to break it down into three simple things that you can do to uh, try to re basically revive a winner once it's been disabled. So for this video, I'm gonna be bringing in my ad account manager, Duncan. Um, he's a good friend of mine. I've done a, a video with him before. I'll show the thumbnail right here. But he's gonna be explaining these three things, I think because he manages so many different accounts, like he pretty much always has 100 ad accounts under him that he looks at and helps with. Um, so since he has that experience, I'm gonna bring him in here to explain these three simple things and kind of give you some tips underneath each of those three simple things. Um, and I say simple with a light heart, P.S. It's not really that simple. So let's get right into this video. So before we actually get into the three steps on what to do to uh, revive a disabled account or get a, get an ad account back, um, I wanna talk about one of the most important things when it comes to this subject, and that is not getting disabled in the first place. Now, I know that Facebook has been disabling people for not very good reasons, and a lot of times they have no reason at all. So you might be following everything that I say, and still get disabled, which is perfectly fine. It's normal. Um, Facebook has automatic systems that kind of track, um, or they, they don't track, they flag accounts um, and based on different circumstances. And sometimes it's wrong. Honestly, most of the time it's wrong. Um, but what you should do, like if you're running ads on Facebook, I know it's tedious, um, but what you should do is read the entire Facebook ad policy and understand everything that goes into it. It's not that long, but it is kind of long but make sure that you read and understand it. That way, um, if you do get disabled, you know what you did wrong, and if you didn't do anything wrong, then you know that as well. Um, just You just don't wanna be in a position where you have no idea what you did wrong, and then you get disabled, and now you're wondering like, oh, did they do it for no reason? Did they do it for a reason? Don't wait to get disabled to read the policy. Get familiar with it now, and just do your absolute best to follow it as best as you can. All right, guys, so we're gonna get into the three steps now. Um, I have my manager here, Duncan. I just introduced him, but yeah, he manages a, probably about 100 accounts at all times, pretty much, um, for the past probably six months or so. Um, so he's really experienced and knowledgeable, and I had him help me make this list, um, which we have notes here, and we're gonna share some tips on, on uh, the first thing that you should do, uh, which is filing an appeal, but I'll hand the microphone over to Duncan here and he'll kind of take over. All right, so let's say you get disabled. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and file an appeal. Um, the most important key here is that you wanna be genuine and honest that you made a mistake. Um, so write that email to or in the appeal box, write that script like you are talking to an employer or talking to a boss. You know, you wanna be very genuine, write it like a business email. Um, so you want an introduction, you know, say, hi, my name is, um, talk about, you know, the policy guidelines that you did um, break. Uh, it's usually, you know, they're very undescriptive when it comes to talking about what you actually did wrong because most of the time it is a mistake on their end. Um, and then go ahead and just end it with, you know, talking about how, you know, you use Facebook for your business, you use it for your livelihood, um, and say thank you. So I realize that uh, you probably are talking to a robot when it comes to this, you know, it's not, it's most likely not a human that's reading your messages and responses, but it's always good to go the extra mile just in case. Um, and you wanna wait about 20 minutes to 72 hours for a response. Now, it can be wide range like that. Um, most likely it's gonna be within the first 48 hours, but we like to have 72 hours just in case. All right, so after you've waited around 72 hours, if you still don't have a response from them, um, what you're gonna wanna do, and this is kinda like the next best thing, like if, if Facebook's not getting back to you, and you don't really know what to do, usually what we tell people is source another Facebook account. Like your Facebook account is not the only one in this world, um, but you know this, this can be a little bit iffy because obviously you're using somebody else's Facebook account for your business, and I'm assuming that if you're doing this, you probably have a winner already. So, um, you know, they know your business name, your name, you know, they have it all logged. So there's a few things that you can do to be less risky, um, like to, to kind of raise as little flags as possible. And I'll have Duncan run through those now. Yeah, so basically you want to start out with friends and family. That's like the first move after you lose your own personal Facebook account. So start contacting any friends, any family members that have older Facebook accounts, you know, obviously the older the better, at least a few years. Um, and that's a lot less risky um, getting banned because you're on the same IP as possibly a family member that also lives there. 
So to start out, you know, we want you to make an ad account, a business manager in that new Facebook. And uh, that being the first business manager that Facebook has probably ever seen, um, you want to go ahead and warm it up by spending literally like $15 a day um, for like four to five days on just some basic engagement campaigns um, just to get that account moving. You know, if we go in and start testing products really quickly, we're talking about a much higher possibility of a ban. Um, so you want to be extra cautious, you know, if you want to go the extra mile, we should look into a new Facebook page, um, a new domain for your website, um, and just overall kind of rebranding everything you had been doing before, along with a new debit card or a credit card. Um, these are steps that are kind of, it's if you want to be as safe as possible, this is the way you do it. Um, I don't suggest it to everybody, you know, if someone's trying to get back up and running quickly, um, but it definitely does help. Yeah, and like another another note on uh, getting a new debit card. Um, sometimes when when you get a debit card, they'll put the your personal name on it, and like let's say your name is Billy and your friend's Facebook account, unless you have a friend with the same name, um, is gonna have a different name on it. So I've seen in the past Facebook actually flagging accounts, like if the if the name on the Facebook account is Billy, but the name on the debit or credit card is Jason, for example. Um, then they could flag that. So um, one way I've been able to get around that is by putting the business name on the debit card. Um, so that way, it's no personal name. Um, and I have debit cards with where it says like just the business name. Some banks do it, some don't. Um, but this is like a good way to uh, not you know have a different name on the card than what you have on the ad account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then lastly, I would suggest VPN. Um, we can move into that. You know. So. We're really just trying to go as safe as possible through all these steps as we go down the list. Um, you want to have your VPN in the same country. You know, there's no need to go outside of that. It just makes things a lot simpler. Um, and that just is that extra step of security. Yeah, it could actually, uh, you know, if, if it's a United States account logging in from France, like they could just flag your account just for that because um, there's a lot of hackers overseas that are actually hacking Facebook accounts. So you won't get banned necessarily, but it could flag your account um, as risky because Facebook might think that you got hacked from somebody in France. Um, and I've had this happen to me numerous times too. So um, you don't need to be real uh, in depth with the VPN. Just if it's a USA account, you just need to put the VPN in the USA. And if that raises any flags, uh, you can literally just say like, hey, I'm traveling, like I'm in a different location now. That's why the VPN is different. All right, so I mean, we didn't go too in depth on using friends accounts, but it's pretty straightforward. But let's say you're in the situation where now you've appealed on your ad account, maybe you're still waiting for a response or maybe they said the decision is final. Um, you used up all your friends and family's accounts or maybe you don't have friends and family. Um, you know, we've ran into that situation before um, and you have no other options. There's a few other options, but this is just like what we have experience with. Um, if you can't use your account, you can't use your friends or family's account, the absolute end of the road, the last resort obviously is buying Facebook accounts. So we use a website called fbaccs.com to buy accounts when it's the last resort. Um, and there's a lot of scamming websites out there that say they're farming accounts that aren't actually. And we've had quite a bit of success if you follow the instructions that they give you on warming up these accounts, which we'll get into in a moment. Um, but really the, the key here is be very careful where you buy accounts from and you know make that decision for yourself if it's something that you want to do and go that next step um, in making sure that you can still advertise. Yeah and just for my own sake like we're not in promotion or partnership with AFBACCS.com um, I just wanted to share it because we've used it and we didn't get scammed um, I mean the accounts are pretty good quality but that's for now um, I don't want to associate me with that company because I don't know what they do or who they are, um, obviously. But they've worked so far. But please use it at your own risk because if they go and scam you, do not come and blame me. Um, like, I don't know who owns it. I don't really know the whole situation over there. It's just worked okay so far. So I really want to emphasize that. All right. So kind of the details about buying one of these farmed accounts. Now, it is very risky when it comes to getting banned again. Um, so there's a very specific warm-up period that you have to go through much much more in depth than what we did with the friends and families accounts. So this takes about 30 days if you want to do it correctly. Um, and basically what will happen is you'll receive the account 
through an email, you'll go ahead and sign in. Um, you can choose to pick picture packets along with the account when you buy it, and a lot of other things just to kind of further the chance of not getting banned. Um, but the first week, your kind of goal is, is to do basic kind of web browsing and acting like it's your own Facebook account. So imagine how you'd normally scroll through Facebook, you know, checking out posts, you know, looking at feeds, watching videos. You want to do the same thing. Um, that first week, you're not looking to uh, watch or join any groups, but you want to just kind of treat it like you would a normal Facebook. As the weeks continue, you know, week two, week three, you want to get into some groups. Uh, you want to add some friends to the Facebook account. Um, you want to interact with those friends in their posts. And you want to make sure that those friends are at least 80% in your area. So let's say you're in a certain city. You want to make sure that the majority of your friends are also located in that city. And that just kind of furthers the security um, from how Facebook sees it. Um, along with that, you know, we're looking for 200 to 500 friends. Um, I would say maybe 30 to 40 Facebook groups um, at max, and you really just want to take it slow and treat it like a, a well-used Facebook. Um, from there, you know, we can go back and start thinking about creating that business manager and that ad account. And kind of like we said in step two with the friends and families accounts, we want to do the same engagement campaign to warm that up. Uh, but the key factors are is it's very risky, you know, you gotta do it the right way. Take your time and don't rush it, otherwise you're just gonna waste the account and waste the money. All right, well, uh, obviously, say thanks to Duncan for giving that input, but um, yeah, I mean, buying accounts, definitely risky. Um, I would follow everything that Duncan here says because he has more experience with buying accounts than I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically step number one, appeal it, you should always appeal it, just give it your shot, be genuine, treat it like you're human, admit to your faults, etc. Um, step two, use your friends and family's accounts. Like you can even start doing that right now as a backup if you wanted. And if you're completely screwed uh, and you have no other options, you might want to look into buying ad accounts. Um, but you know, as he was saying, it's a very like slow and painful process of just like buying it, warming it up, and then after that, you have to warm it up another you know four or five days with spending money. Um, you just got to be really careful with that area. So I think we touched on some really good points here. Um, but obviously we left some things out. Um, you could have more questions. Every situation is different. So if you are in this situation, feel free to leave a comment and uh, maybe Duncan will go in and answer them or maybe I'll go in and answer them if I'm available. But as for this video, this is Noah Brewer and I'm out. Peace.